How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. Today I'm going to show you how to make a $1 meal using the mackerel pike fish. Now these $1 meals are actually really good for those on a fixed income or limited budget. But did you know that even though it costs so little, it's actually still really healthy for you? Observe, this is the mackerel pike I bought from the fish market. Now normally when you go to an American supermarket, they normally sell you fish that's in fillets already where all the bones is removed. Naturally because there's labor put into it, in order to fillet it for you, it would cost more. So it goes to say if you want to save money, you should buy whole fish instead with the head, with the bone, and everything. Generally what I notice from a large variety of fish is that the more bland it tastes, the cheaper it usually gets. The more bones that the fish has, the cheaper it also gets, but not necessarily the flavor. So it can have a lot of bones and yet a lot of flavor and it would still be really cheap because people just don't want to buy fish with a lot of bones in it. So it is true that this mackerel pike has a lot of bones, but if you know how to eat it, it's really, really easy to pick out all the bones and I'll show you how to do this later. So right now let's just get to cooking at first and let me show you how this is done. It's mackerel pike made in Taiwan. The cool thing about this is wild caught and because you're buying really small fish there's gonna be less mercury content in it. Over here you see it's $1.99 a pound. Six fishes in here for $3.60 which is about 60 cents per fish. Every time I buy fish I bring it home and I rinse it a bit first. Over here you see a lot of little bones and you could chew through it if you want to but I prefer to remove these little bones and I'll show you how to do it later. When you look at the fish you want to look at the eyeballs to make sure that it's pretty clear and then you can also look at the gills but it's removed here but you want to make sure the gills are really bright red rather than a dull red over here I'm just making sure that all the guts are removed before I steam it this is what I use to steam with it's just a pan now I want to put the fish over here, but I don't want to put it directly on the plate. So I need some vegetables to pad them rather than buying a specific type of vegetables just to put on the plate. I just pick whatever vegetable I have. You see, even with green beans, I can do the same. Just try to cut it into uh, something very, very thin like this. And then you just try to line the plate with the vegetable. Let me cut all of them up. Okay, now when I put the fish on top of this, it's not going to stick to the plate because the fish skin, if you place it directly on the plate, it would stick and by the time you take it off the plate, you wanna turn it to eat the other side, it'll get stuck. So this is to prevent the skin from sticking onto the plate. Here are the fish again. Each fish over here is about four to five ounces. So each one would do just as well for one meal. So right here, you already have six meals. Over here, I'm just heating some water ready to steam the fish. So it's boiling, so I'm gonna put the fish in. I knew the fish was too long, so I asked them to cut off the tail. I'm gonna try to wedge them in here somehow. Yep, they fit barely. So now we're gonna steam this for about 14 minutes and it'll be done. Okay, now it's done. I normally just take this little grabber thing and take it off because it's really hot. I dumped out the water, gave it a quick rinse. I put it back on the stove to use the residual heat to evaporate all the water on the pan still. You want to pour out the juice from the head or tail end because if you pour it down the side here, the juice will actually collect here and drip onto the edges. So you want it to drip in the middle so you would need to pour it from the tail end or you can pour it from the head end. But I need to position this grabber at the tip here in order to do that. Okay. And then I just put it on another plate of the same size so it won't be too hot and we can take this and eat. So let's do some plating. Let's say we want one fish on here. And I started eating barley and they sell these for about 80 cents a pound. So it's really pretty cheap. Barley tends to be a bit more chewy than rice. And it'll take a little bit getting used to, but after a while, I feel like barley is even better because there's like a little bit of chewiness to it. And uh, it depends. You just got to get used to it and really like the chewiness. So here it is, the whole meal. You got about 60 cents worth of fish, 10 cents worth of barley, and another 30 cents worth of green beans. I want to mention that this mackerel pike is actually wild and it is of the smaller fish type. So therefore, you're going to get less mercury content. And generally, having smaller fish is good for you. So now I'm gonna zoom in on this fish so you can see what I do when I'm eating it in order to easily remove the bones. But first, let me have some of this fish broth. I know this is kind of fishy tasting for some people and usually 
there are people that really don't like the taste of fish. Um, some people can stand it. I personally can stand it. I don't even need to add ginger or anything. Um, and I can, you know, just have it just fine. Every fish is a little bit different in the bone structure. Sometimes they have bones in the back over here, but this one in particular only has bones along the belly over here. So what you can basically do is only eat the top half of it like this. Now all of this part over here will not have any bones in it. So you can just grab that and eat all of this. This belly part is likely the difficult part because if I flip it over, you can see all these bones right here. And this might prove very difficult for most people to eat. If you just take this and take a bite out of it in your mouth, you're gonna get all kinds of bones in there. Towards the non-belly part over here in the back, there's not much bones either. So you can run your chopstick over it and you can see, oh, okay, I found a few uh, bones, so I can just put that aside. So it will make things a lot easier if you're willing to use two of your fingers to pick out the bones. Um, this part is the difficult part, so this is part of the middle of the fish as well. And over here, I can just start removing all the bones. You see it comes off pretty easily if you know where they are. And then you can just run your chopsticks over it to see, oh, there. You see, I just ran my chopstick over and I can see a bone move right there. So I can remove that. There's another one there. And now this is basically boneless and it's the sole reason why this fish is so cheap at $2 a pound versus, you know, other comparable fish will be like $4 a pound. Now, after you're done with that, you can basically eat the head. For the head, if you're okay with eating the head, you can just basically suck out all the juices, skin and whatever, and anything hard, you just spit out. Put that aside over there. All of these are boneless so far. And in order to take out the middle bone, well, it just comes right off like that. Now we have the same thing as the other side, except it's uh, upside down. So we can just go and open it up in the middle, like that. This whole piece is boneless. This is boneless as well over here. Now we can just pick out some of the bones. Of course, you want to um, have washed your hands first. Again, you can run your chopsticks across to try to find any leftover bones. There's some right here. And that's it, this is all pretty much boneless, but you might find one or two bones in there somewhere. I think this fish actually tastes really good after you've taken out all the bones and stuff. It sort of tastes like sardine, kind of like tuna, kind of like sardine. So you might argue that, hey, why is it so cheap? Maybe it tastes like disgusting or something. The truth is, it actually tastes really good. And today, before making it, I was actually craving it. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna taste some of this, you know, mackerel fish thing. It's gonna have this good mackerel taste to it. So thanks for watching this. I know this video is kind of similar to the other $1 dinner meals I had, but the point of this video is to try other things that's less popular. Generally, the less popular food items are not as expensive. Take for example, Chilean sea bass. I used to buy that at 9.99 these days it runs for about 21 dollars a pound so you know it's just gotten too popular maybe the people like how it's very buttery tasting maybe more people are aware of that fish so the more people that are aware of it does not necessarily mean the nutritional content has gone up twice as much the pricing of the fish is only due to the demand due to the popularity take a look at lobsters for one they normally these days go for ten dollars a pound when a long time ago Lobsters used to be considered a peasant food. In fact, the lobster bosses of those days kept on feeding the workers fishing the lobsters lobster, and they actually had a strike saying, we don't want any more lobsters. So you see how the cultural views skews the pricing of various types of foods. People favor lobsters, crab, steak. That's why those are so expensive these days. But to me, if you're able to discover really cheap, good tasting fish, it would actually reduce your grocery budget by a lot. So thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know what kind of food that you've discovered is really, really cheap as well. If you're interested in supporting this channel, check out my Audible link down in the video description below. I have a Patreon over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.